credit where credit is due. My friend Sonny Bunch, uh, he's a, a movie reviewer. He has a theory. Environmentalists in movies, they make the best bad guys these days. Just, just think about it. Uh, in uh, the Avengers, it was Thanos who wanted to wipe out half the population of the universe to save the universe because resources are scarce. Malthusian. In Aquaman, uh, Aquaman's brother was the bad guy who wanted to wipe out humanity because they were polluters. In uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, uh, the, the organization wanted to wipe out humanity to allow the planet time to heal. The, the bad guys are the environmentalists. And I was thinking about that. And I realized, you know what? The environmentalists are the bad guys in the Ukrainian situation as well. They have enabled Vladimir Putin. And let, I know, I know, I know, I know. Some of you are thinking here, I'm stretching here, but just bear with me here. There are a couple of things. One of which is uh, the American military used to have a two-war strategy. The idea was that the United States of America needed a military capable of, of fighting two major wars on two fronts against two rivals at the same time. And when the Obama administration came in, they decided they needed to downsize the military in part because of its carbon footprint and, and environmental concerns and costs related thereto, that we really didn't need a two-war strategy because look how peaceful everything was. Well, the problem was that everything was peaceful because we had a two-war strategy. We got rid of our two-war strategy and started downsizing the military, and look what happened. But again, and this is important, and I'm not making it up, one of their concerns was that climate change is a national security concern. And one of the ways to help fight climate change was to reduce the carbon footprint of the military. And one of the ways to reduce the carbon footprint of the military was to reduce the size of the military. And after all, we're not going to war with any major powers. We are on good terms with Russia and China. That was their theory. All we're fighting are terrorists who live in caves. That was the problem. But then they began doing other things as well. In Europe, environmentalists are very anti-nuclear power. They believe nuclear power ultimately pollutes. Therefore, we need to shut down all the nuclear power plants. So around Europe, which was way more nuclear power friendly than we were, they began systematically shutting down nuclear power plants around Europe and replacing them with solar and wind. The problem is twofold, one of which doesn't get talked about enough. For a while there, uh, the, the solar and wind power were putting so much power back into the power grid, and the power companies were not allowed to charge access to the power grid from the companies putting up the windmills and the solar power, uh, that they lost their ability to maintain their lines. They essentially were paying people, and power companies were going broke. They were having to pay private individuals who were producing wind and solar power, and they were paying so much the power companies were going broke. So they had to change that whole dynamic. But then there's the other issue that is more commonly talked about. Solar power and wind power do not always work. Solar power does not work at night, nor very efficiently in the winter when there are fewer uh, bright days and you get snow on the panels. Wind power does not work when there is no wind and there was no baseload power in Europe. And this continued to go on and they knew it. That's part of the problem here is they knew the problem, but they also decided they had made all of these treaties about their carbon footprints. And you got Greta Thunberg and the others over there telling them we're all going to die in 10 years if we don't do something. And they all believed the rhetoric. So they had to do something. And what they did is they decided they couldn't expand their carbon footprints. So they would go to Russia and say, hey, let us have your natural gas. You've got so much of it. And Vladimir Putin obliged. And then in this country, the Democrats killed the Keystone XL pipeline. Now, contrary to what some of you might believe, the Keystone XL pipeline was never about us. The Keystone XL pipeline was never about 
us getting the oil from Canada for us. The Keystone XL pipeline was all about getting the oil from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico to be refined and sent overseas. That would, however, free up domestic capacity for us. But the pipeline itself was about Europe to make Europe less dependent on Russia. And the Democrats killed it. Not only did the Democrats kill it, Democratic appointed judges have killed drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. The Biden administration has killed drilling on federal lands. Biden administration officials and judges together have killed other expansions of the oil and natural gas footprint of the United States, including just recently a natural gas pipeline through Appalachia that would lower natural gas prices across the country. All for environmental concerns. And what has happened? Russia does not have those concerns. The Russians do not have the concerns of the environmentalists. Only the United States and Europe do. Back in the 1980s, well, after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the Soviet Union, Boris Yeltsin allowed in people to look at the records of the former Soviet Union. This is how we know, for example, Ted Kennedy was trying to get the Soviets involved in the 1984 uh, presidential campaign against Ronald Reagan here. They were hoping the Soviets would send some signals that could undercut Ronald Reagan's message, but pay no attention to that because Teddy Kennedy was a hero to the left and, and we're not allowed to say anything about it, but we know it's true. It was in the records. Something else that was in the records of the Soviet Union is that they propped up Western peace groups and environmentalist groups. They funded environmentalist groups. They funded peace groups in the West that agitated against nuclear proliferation. Why? because they knew that Western leaders and Western democracies would listen to these agitators as long as they didn't know the Soviets were paying for them. When the Soviet Union fell and they were no longer able to subsidize these groups, all the peaceniks joined the environmentalists and the environmentalists came up with, the world is going to end in 10 years, please give us your money, and Western nations went along with it. Many of those people who are in these environmentalist groups today hate the West, hate capitalism, hate free markets, and hate your ability to decide for yourself how you want to live your life. They're watermelons, green on the outside, but very red on the inside. In the 80s, they were subsidized by the Soviets, and now they're subsidized by their own governments because they've convinced their governments the world is going to end as long as people get to turn on an incandescent light bulb. I'm not making any of this stuff up, y'all. And so what's happened? Europe has become more and more dependent on Russia. The Nord Stream 2 pipeline, they've shut it down, but there are plenty of other pipelines, one of which runs through Ukraine. And even the Nord Stream 2, it's only delayed, deferred. It's not dead. In fact, the Germans are out today saying, whoa, 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 guys, we, we, may, need to, we may need to be a little more cautious about our sanctions on Russia. The Russians are saying, fine, 5,000 euros for gas. I'm sure your, your citizens will love paying this. Prices are going to go up. Have you seen your natural gas bill already? Natural gas prices in the United States are already going up. Charlie was telling me, my, my producer, call screener, head of programming for the show, was telling me that their natural gas bill was over $500 this past month. And they use less than they did this time last year when it was only $300. It's not just them. Everywhere in this country, natural gas prices are going up. And lo and behold, China has just placed more orders for natural gas. They're going to import even more due to very cold winter temperatures in China. And that's going to drive up the price even further. Weird how the Chinese suddenly at this moment, when winter is almost over, decided, oh, we need even more natural gas. And they're going to get it off of the American markets and the Qatari markets, not the Russian market. And that's going to drive up the price even further. We have become so consumed with saving the planet, we're about to lose it to war. We have become so consumed, particularly on the left, you guys have become so consumed with the idea that the whole world is going to hell in a handbasket unless you give in to the environmentalists. What's happened? You have forgotten that energy resources are national security. 
And the more developed our energy resources are, the easier it is for us to get oil out of the ground and refine it into gasoline and fossil fuels. And the easier it is for us to get natural gas to Europe and petroleum to Europe, the more stable the world is because we are less, less reliant on regimes that fear us and do not like democracy. Vladimir Putin is able to do what he's doing in large part because the United States abandoned its two-war doctrine and Europe abandoned its own self-reliance when it comes to energy. All of us together have played right into his hands. And by the way, Vladimir Putin has been telling us for years what he would do. Putin went to Berlin in 2007 and literally said he wanted to push back and destabilize NATO and European alliances and was willing to use his natural gas to do it. He said that in public and people pretended he didn't. Why are people ignoring the things Vladimir Putin has said? He has literally said he's not opposed to using his resources for the strategic benefit of Russia, including natural gas. He has literally said he wanted to destabilize and roll back NATO. Why did we ignore him? Why are we continuing to coddle environmentalists who continue to sell the fiction that the world is going to end in 10 years if we don't listen to them? Right now, we need to listen to Russia and China. They are our adversaries. They are becoming threats. And the more we reduce our energy self-sufficiency, the more we rely on environmentalist concerns about solar and wind, the more we scrap nuclear power, the more likely it is that they can be dominant. The more we worry about the carbon footprint of our military instead of our military's ability to kill bad guys, we become weaker. I'm sorry, but drag queens in your military corridors are no match for Russian tanks. Pronoun lectures inside the Pentagon are no match for Russian bullets. And your concerns about your carbon footprint are no match for Russians willing to turn you into a heap of carbon when they invade and blow us up. They won't come here, but they'll start at Ukraine. And emboldened by Western weakness, they'll move in and fully secure Belarus. And then they'll head to Poland and Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. And guess what? Those are NATO partners. And we will either have to fight or we will say, yep, okay, we're ready to give up NATO, at which point we're ready to give up all of our alliances because no one will trust us again. And those countries will start looking at China and Russia as places they need to go and they need to deal with and they need to be friends with. None of this is good. And all of this was predictable. The environmentalists' concerns have hinged on hysteria for 30 years. And Democrats have listened to those concerns and that hysteria. They believe the world is coming to an end in 10 years. The European governments in particular have totally bought into the idea. And ironically have made themselves more beholden to Vladimir Putin and dependent on his energy reserves that they have propped him up. Even this country, the United States of America, imports $700 million a year of Russian fertilizer so that we don't have the carbon footprint on our hands of producing it. It makes us look more environmentally responsible by relying on the Russians. We've bought into a bunch of hysteria that has played right into their hands. In Glacier National Park, the federal government used your taxpayer dollars 10 years ago and put up a whole lot of signs that they are now taking down. Use your money. Wasted it. Those signs said that the glaciers in Glacier National Park would all be gone by the year 2020. They're still there. So they're having to take down the signs that you yourself paid for. They believed the environmental hysterics. And by believing the environmental hysterics around the world and Western powers, we've propped up China and Russia and made the Western world more vulnerable to an Eastern world that does not share our values and does not like us.